As many of you watching here will know, the cruising series on Nintendo 64 is a big guilty pleasure of mine. There's something about the simplicity of the arcade action that makes it such an easy go-to game. You can pick up any of the three titles on N64, switch off your mind, witness some absolutely ridiculous racing, and then turn it off after an exciting playthrough. In many ways though, the entire series was a product of its time. It was an era when charging a full retail price for what was essentially a short arcade experience was quite common and larger racing experiences were still relatively new on home consoles. As home console games progressed into more in-depth games which often had licenses, real world locations and tracks and even realistic physics, arcade racing games started to become few and far between. You could argue that aside from a few classic titles, this type of arcade racing experience was a relic of the past, and one which you'd be more likely to see on a mobile phone app store than adorning store shelves at your local gaming outlet. So here we are in 2021, and being the good lot that you are, I've been getting a ton of messages and comments asking me to check out Cruisin' Blast, the latest entry in the Cruisin' series, which promises a huge arcade-like racing experience packed with raw thrills. No pun intended. Developed and published by Raw Thrills, Cruisin' Blast has actually been around for quite a few years now. Originally developed under various code names including Cruisin' Adventure and Cruisin' Redline, you can even go to YouTube and see trailers of the game as far back as 2016. In fact, it seems that it was so long ago now that even back then I remember people messaging me with the link to that trailer. But for various reasons in life, I didn't really follow the game's development and progress until now. So for today's video, we're trying to answer the simple question, will N64 fans of the Cruising series love or hate Cruising Blast? For starters, I'm looking at the developer's pedigree. Arcade publisher Raw Thrills may not be a household name, but the company was co-founded by Eugene Jarvis, who was one of the original designers of the Cruising series way back in the Midway era of the 90s. Having someone so close to the original games involved in the project straight away gives me faith that this would be a much better entry in the series than the abysmal Cruising on the Nintendo Wii was. So that makes Cruising Blast the sixth entry in the Cruising series and the first one in nearly 15 years. And so with the gaming landscape being so much different than it was back when I first fell in love with the series, I was both eager to see how the game would play out but also cautious considering that the studio may try to make the game appeal to a much more modern audience. From the moment I started the game the initial presentation was superb. I loved the clean menus, catchy music which instantly draws back memories of being huddled around my N64 and the vibrancy of the colours immediately lets you know that this game is going to be all about the fun factor. The Cruising series is known for its absolutely bonkers range of vehicles that you can race with. Whilst the initial lineup of available cars to choose from was a bit underwhelming, you quickly realise that there's a whole ton of secret cars to unlock. And by secret cars, I mean, well, secret movable things, because the final roster takes on the wackiness to a whole nother level. One disappointment with this, however, is that the short loading screens show static images of races taking place, and pretty much all of these feature the secret vehicles. And so the surprise factor of unlocking, say, a tank is kind of taken away from you because you know what's going to be coming at some point in the experience. Now, it's not a deal breaker, but call me old fashioned, but I do still like a good surprise. Aside from being able to change the colour setup of your mode of transport, you also have the ability to level up each vehicle by way of experience points. At first you get to unlock a neon mode which adorns your vehicle with fluorescent lights, then you can get a body kit which pimps out your ride a little more, before you eventually unlock the engine upgrade which further enhances the visual insanity of your vehicle. By the time you unlock everything for your mode of transport, you could have a neon pink and green triceratops with a metal mask on with flaming bracelets on its feet. I mean, tell me another game that this happens in. Whilst I would have liked some statistic upgrades rather than purely aesthetic or cosmetic ones, upon reflection I decided I actually would be wrong in thinking that. By keeping it pure and clean, it's resisting any attempts whatsoever to add any simulation aspects to the game. This game wants you to know it's an arcade experience and will do absolutely everything possible to avoid straying away from that. 
Of course, the moment you start playing you realise that this is a very special and unique game. The races themselves look fantastic and the sense of speed combined with the absolute carnage taking place on the courses makes every race feel intense. Be it from UFOs abducting cows, police cars trying to ram you off the road, helicopters trying to blow you up, or even getting a giant yeti causing you to smash through the ice. Nothing you see here takes itself seriously, and in a world where it seems having fun in the game is sometimes left on the back burner by the studio, Cruising Blast does everything it can just to make you get a rush when you're playing it. The game's easy difficulty is absolutely too easy. Any racing game fan should breeze through the entire set of easy cups, and pretty much most of the normal difficulty ones too with absolute ease within a couple of hours. Now the game doesn't make it explicitly clear however, but in order to get anywhere near close to winning the hard or extreme difficulty races and cups, you'll need to quickly learn how to link your drifts together. By the time you're racing these more difficult races it becomes more of a hypnotic experience. You'll have to link drifts together pretty much from the moment you start the race all the way to the finish line. Each time you'll get small boosts to push you further down the track. Whilst the races in the previous entries were never reliant on this mechanic to be able to complete the entire game, this new way of racing doesn't feel forced or out of place in Cruising Blast. It feels like a modern feature installed into the game, but with how well the races flow and with so much taking place on screen, it does become second nature. You'll always be looking for ways in which you can drift, even for a short moment just to get that split second boost. And speaking of split seconds, when you get to the harder difficulties, you'll be winning or losing races at the last moment all the time. It creates an adrenaline packed race in which your victory or failure will be down to the smallest of margins, and I for one love that. Dotted on the courses are cash bundles which you can use to unlock new cars and keys which you'll need to seek out and find to unlock special vehicles. Cash has a green hue and keys has a yellow glow which makes them easy to spot, but part of the joy of the game is figuring out how to reach those often hard to reach areas in order to maximise your collecting whilst you're racing. Now it's not a requirement and you'll still have a bunch of fun just racing in the game, but this is just another small addition to the game which broadens the scope of the game and it makes it have a lot more replayability. In addition to this the courses themselves take you on a journey across the globe to scenery which covers cities, snowy mountains, the arid desert and flowing volcanic mountains. It feels at times almost like a nostalgic nod to some of the classic courses from the likes of Cruise in USA, Cruise in World and Cruise in Exotica. And I don't know if that was intentional by the studio, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt there. There are also shortcuts and hidden passages throughout the game's many races, and while some are nothing more than branching paths for you to choose, others are often needed to help you find those hidden keys or are shortcuts which you must access in order to shave vital seconds off your times. The game however is best played in short bursts. The cups are broken down into four race events, and with a cup lasting around 10 minutes from start to finish, it's the perfect game to pick up, have a blast on and then put down. If you play the game for longer periods what you start to see is a lot of repetition in the courses you're racing on, and whilst they may make small changes like the starting points or the route through the track, they can start to feel very familiar with only 5 different locations in the game. Now this is helped somewhat by the themes which include events such as cops chasing you, UFOs invading and helicopters blowing up the environment as you race. But more often than not these are just aesthetic changes and they're not significantly changing the races to an extent that they do feel like brand new races. Perhaps the only criticism I can think and well fairly throw at this game is the lack of online multiplayer. This game would absolutely shred online and playing this with a bunch of other skilled players would have resulted in some amazing races being decided by the smallest of margins. Instead you're restricted to local co-op only and although there is support for 4 players, I feel that in 2021 this really needed an online option. Another reason that this is so badly needed is that as soon as you've gotten gold on all of the cups, you've unlocked all of the secret vehicles and found all of the keys, there wouldn't really be a reason to keep playing. If you don't have local friends to play with then the game becomes redundant the moment you complete it. Now sure there's time trial modes and so on, but without even online leaderboards there's no incentive to keep playing past the completion of the core game. 
which is a shame because the controls are simple enough for anybody to be able to pick up and play, and yet they give you enough precision to master the game quickly and become great at reducing your race times. I played handheld on my Switch OLED and the screen popped with the vibrant colours, but it was playing it docked with the Switch Pro controller that I really felt the best experience when playing. The music, aside from the catchy main menu music, is decent enough. Now it doesn't blow you away, but it is great quality. And for my personal taste, it works well because it doesn't become a distraction when you're racing. More importantly, with Cruising Blast is that the sound effects are superb. And with so much destruction and action taking place on screen, you'll notice the sound effects way more than the music, which in an arcade game is ideal in my opinion. Overall though, I think Cruising Blast is perhaps the best arcade racing game I've played for a long, long, long time. I've been putting hours into Forza Horizon 5 and whilst I love the finesse of the 4K graphics, the physics of the real world cars, and for me that is a 10 out of 10 game by the way, sometimes you, well, you get sick of having fillet steak every day and what you really want is that Five Guys burger and that ladies and gentlemen is Cruising Blast. A sublime racing game and sure you're not going to be playing it in 12 months time and you won't be up late at night having online battles with people across the globe and you won't get hundreds of hours of content and playtime out of it. But for what Cruising Blast set out to do, it's nailed it big time. So to answer the question I posed right at the start of the video, which is will N64 fans of the Cruising series love or hate Cruising Blast, well, you'll absolutely love it. But going a step further, I can't see how anyone wouldn't like this game. It's also really cheap to pick up, and so in my opinion it is a worthy addition to anyone's Nintendo Switch library. So now it's over to you. Have you played Cruising Blast and what did you make of it? Do you like these old school style arcade races these days? Or do you prefer more modern racing games which you can invest much more time into? I'd also love to know what your favourite entry in the Cruising series was. Just don't say Cruising on the Nintendo Wii. As always though, thank you for watching and until next time.